Good morning, Professor Yan. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Jay Wei from Michigan State. And it's an honor for me to be here to talk about particle accelerator developments. So I will use a few selected examples. And as this is a celebratory event, so first I would like to pay my tribute to Professor Yan as a teacher, as a mentor, and of course as a master. And I will talk about the, uh, just uh, introduce the frontiers of particle accelerators with example of, of energy frontier, density frontier, you know, the LHC, and the RIC, as perhaps in the audience is very, uh, very familiar with. Also, the projects of, uh, in the power frontier, spark neutron source. Then the, then on the third part, I will come to particle accelerator developments in China, the Chinese version of SNS, accelerator-driven <coughs> subterranean facilities, as well as more application type of uh, projects, proton and heavy ion therapy. And I will use uh, my latest uh, uh, work on the FRIP as example to, to, to show you the technologies and physics for the, modern, for the modern accelerators. And finally, I would like to close my talk by commenting on what it takes to build a great accelerators, which is on the future of, the, of this field. <clears throat> okay, so first uh, to Professor Yan. So prof uh, as we all know, as the scholar and the master, Professor Yan's influence to the field of the field is, uh, is profound. Also as a teacher and as a mentor, from ITP Stony Brook to, to Tsinghua University, as you heard from, uh, from our previous speakers, Professor Yan has been inspiring and guiding and supporting generations of followers to the field of exotophysics, and therefore deeply contributing to the science and to the society, in, both in China and in the world. And among our students, you know, it's a quite famous, famous that Professor Yang uh, uh, has, 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 has a line that, that indicates the future of high energy physics relies on accelerators. So that's a point I will come, come back to before I close my talk. So as a, as a student of uh, Professor Yang, so in 1984, so I came from Tsinghua to Stony Brook and because of Professor Yang. And in 1985, Professor Yang taught the graduate class 515 quantum mechanics. And obviously, I didn't do, do too well in the class, so it took uh, Professor Yan much easier. It's much easier for me to be convinced to get into the field of uh, astrophysics, comparing with uh, Alex. And in 1989, I, so in, uh, starting in, in 1986, Professor Yan introduced me to the field of astrophysics. In 89, I got my degree by working at, at, at RIC from Brookhaven. And also after that, for five years, Professor Yan directly supported me working in China, both in uh, IHEP and in uh, Tsinghua. So I personally benefited tremendously from, uh, from uh, Professor Yan. So this is the picture at Stony Brook. I think it's uh, the year it's around 86. Actually, this is me and my wife, and this is Professor Yan. This is a photo of the physics department in ITP. This is when, uh, I, when I defend my thesis with Professor Yan, Ernie Kuron and Yanis Kurtz and S.Y. Lee. That's in the, in, the, in the physics building. So around that time, I worked uh, on the project, the RIC project. And of course, uh, at that time also, the fate of these projects also varies. So there are projects like SFL, got canceled, and uh, like SSC, as you know, canceled in 1993. Unfortunately, RIC survived and RIC succeeded. So I worked on the project for 14 years and trained as a third physicist. So these are beautiful pictures, as you must be very familiar with, of the project. It's a one billion project, big scale. And this is a, this is a <coughs> bird's view of the, of the facility where the ions are produced in the tandem, transferred to booster, to the AGS, and then injected into the two counter-indexing uh, counter, uh, counter uh, uh, rings and collide at six, at six points for experiments. So this is a picture of the rib tunnel. That's before the supercollecting super magnets are actually welded and, uh, and uh, completed, te completed uh, tested. Okay, so that's the first project I worked on. And later I learned that you know, the, it's, uh, it's more, more than just colliders. There are various frontiers of the field. So I tried to classify into five frontiers. 
First, as you know, it's the energy frontier, and the, uh, the, which is represented by the large LHC, large hydrogen collider. The density frontier, the rig, precision frontier, as you have heard from Alex, the light sources, both LEDAC based and ring based. And also intensity or power frontier, the spallage induction sources and the ADS projects, as well as the industrial application frontier, for example, like proton and heavy ion therapies, as well as, for example, like cargo inspection facilities developed by Tsinghua. So I will try to touch a little bit on each of those. So of course, this is the bird's view of the Geneva area, indicating, indicating the, the, the <coughs> clusters of rings uh, uh, leading to LHC. So, so PS, SPS, and LHC, the ring of 27 kilometer uh, circumference. Again, massive projects, expensive, and uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, proton beams accessing to the, to the, to the highest uh, uh, energy frontier. So this is the Linux, uh, LHC tunnel, showing the mostly consisting, the machine consisting of supervising magnets, as well as the other systems. And this is a picture of the CMS detector, and uh, which again, you heard many results from the experiment. So this is uh, the energy frontier. So I, I covered energy frontier and also density frontier, but also I'd like to spend a few, uh, <coughs> a few more minutes on the, 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 high, the, the beam power frontier. So this is a class of uh, facilities, mo mainly producing uh, secondary beams for research and for applications. So that covers uh, the <coughs> high energy factories, for example, neutrino factories, cannon factories. So that's added at the energy region of from one to 400 GeV proton beam. For material science, life science, that's mainly neutron sources, and as a platform for users as well as as, uh, as applications like uh, like, uh, like uh, ADS projects for nuclear waste transmutation as well as for power generation. So that's at a low energy and with various types of uh, accelerators. And the rare isotope beams, so this is using the, using the, <coughs> using the, any, uh, the beams of, en of, the, of, of energy up to about one GeV per nuclear, and that's to pr pr produce the rare isotopes and secondary beam for research and for applications. And finally, applications like material irradiation. So these are a, big type, uh, a main type of, uh, of application facilities with many, many, uh, uh, types of, uh, of users. So this is uh, one of the representative projects at, at, at the, uh, which is completed about 10 years ago at the Oak Ridge, uh, US, which is a collaboration of uh, six, six labs and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Ber uh, Berkeley, Los Alamos, sorry, this should be Berkeley, Los Alamos, Jefferson Lab, Brookhaven, Oak Ridge, and Argo. So this, you can see the, so maybe next picture. So the beam is produced from the ion source and accelerated through the warm LINAC, cold LINAC, and go to accumulator ring, bombarding on a target, and produce, uh, uh, produce neutrons for, for, for up to 24 uh, beam lines. And from the very beginning, the intense ion source and the front end built by Berkeley, and the uh, warm LINAC, jet tube LINAC, and the side coupled LINAC produced by Los Alamos. And this is the <coughs> superconducting LINAC produced by Jefferson Lab. And Brookhaven, the ring, accumulated ring, finally hitting the target, which is built by Oak Ridge, and various uh, power sources, and finally instruments by Argo. So this is a typical scale of this type of facilities. Again, it's a billion dollar projects. And uh, so let me shift gear a little bit to talk about facility, similar facility in China. So, okay, so this is a photo of the moon, of the Earth actually, from the moon. So that's taken by a, by a Hasselblad. So the people who know the old cameras perhaps is there. So this is, uh, looks like Hasselblad, but it's a duplicate from China. So some, some 12 years later, and we, and even they tried to do better with the, with the top speed of from, from, five, five, uh, five, from one, 500 to the thousands. So I think they are trying to do the same thing with the many 
accept the projects. So basically, duplicating, then the overtaking on several similar projects. So this is the Chinese uh, sparking neutron source, which is built at Dongguan. So this is, the, this is the photo taken a few months ago. You can see the, the ground has been, has been broke, has, uh, of course, has been, has been broken several years ago, and the building has been more or less finished. And also, this is the tunnel during the ring where the facility has just started to, to, to be put in. So this is a scaled down version of SNS. But then there are projects, several very ambitious projects. Of course, we, you all know the Daya Bay uh, uh, <coughs> project. CSNS is in Dongguan. Also, there are several projects in Guangdong. Just in that region alone, several uh, three to four big accelerator projects. So this is the Chinese version of ADS project. This is a heavy ion uh, facility. <coughs> so certainly on the ADS is a big topic in China. So in China right now, so in uh, actually up to the, with the data of, uh, of uh, 2013, there are 18 reactors in operation. And uh, there are 28 reactors in construction. So right now the electricity produced by a nuclear power plant is 14 gigawatt. And very soon, it will be tripled. And in the year of 2050, it will be estimated of 350 to 400 gigawatt, which occupies more than 20% of the national electricity production. And the nuclear waste produced by those power plants is a big issue. And uh, typically, we are talking about life, nuclear waste lifetime of order of like 300,000 years. And uh, so ADS is one of the means to convert those, uh, uh, <coughs> those uh, long lifetime waste into a short lifetime, in this case, of the order of 300 years. And that, of course, is, uh, has, a, has, a, has, a, has a profound uh, uh, impact on the, on the environment. So this picture shows, uh, OK, maybe I should do the animation. So typically, in a conventional facility, you just have, uh, have, have uh, uranium material and go through, the, go through the enrichment cycle and produce the uh, generate the power. Then you just bury those world's waste. So ADS is a stop of trying to process the waste and then burn the waste, burn the waste with, uh, with accelerator projects. So if successful, this can have a big impact on the, on the environment. So this shows the first demonstration project. Actually, in, in this area, China is leading the, leading the world in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the effort. So this is the first, uh, what do you call the RFQ? Uh, facility trying to demonstrate the techno key techno technology which is needed in this type of facility. You can see this is from the ion source to the to the, this RFQ structure, continued by various types of linear accelerators, and finally hit the target, produce neutrons, and then use the neutrons to, to transmute the long lifetime uh, waste into a short lifetime. <coughs> okay, also uh, equally important is on the health of the society. So this is, uh, of course, you know the, uh, there are various kind, types of uh, what they call the uh, knives for, no, it's, it's like for surgery. X-ray ni knives, gamma knives, neutral knives. Now becoming a big uh, boom in business, actually, it's in, Ch in China, is to use a proton and heavy arm. Like, uh, a heavy, proton knife and heavy arm knife for, uh, for therapy. So I think in this case, the challenge is that uh, is the how, to deposit, how to deposit the energy at the, t at the location of the tumor without, with the minimum damage on surrounding healthy, healthy tissues. And, uh, and the approach in this case is to use a 3D spot scan uh, uh, using what's so-called the pencil beam. Of course, you may imagine you know, with, the, with the pencil beam, <coughs> with the pencil beam transversely in X and in Y, you can easily steer the beam into, into a certain spot. But how to adjust the the energy deposition at a certain depth. So that's, uh, that requires, uh, that's, that is actually rely on the mechanism of, mechanism of so-called black peak. Basically, the, the energy deposition, so for, especially for heavy ions and for, 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 for protons, especially, with, uh, especially for, for heavy ions, there's a very sharp peak before the, before the beam gets stopped that uh, for the beam to release almost all, all of its energy at certain depth. In this case, if you time, if you, if, you, if you gauge the energy, energy right, you can, you can reach the point of, uh, of, uh, of uh, spot scanning on the, on the area of tissue. 
So this, you see the actual beam uh, 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 <coughs> scanning. That's a, that's a work done at the IMP, at, uh, at Lanzhou. And using the, using the, using the spot scan with, with adjustable energy to do a 3, 3D scan, spot scan of the, of the, of the patient's uh, treatment. But so far, actually, several hundred uh, uh, patients have been treated in that facility. So there are two running facilities in China, also quite, uh, sev quite several uh, facilities under construction. So they are imported, the facility imported from Siemens. This facility costs several, several, several hundred billion dollars. And then there are domestically developed facilities at IMP in Shanghai and in, in Guangdong. So it's a boom, booming area. OK, so finally, let me just uh, quickly flash through a few slides to show you the technology. And then, then I come to my point. So I used the, the, the facility which I'm, uh, the project which I'm working on to show you, to give you a flavor of, te of the key technologies as well as the physics in, the, in this field. So this is a facility, facility for rare isotope beams. So it's a billion dollar project from, uh, funded by US DOE, cost shared by MSU, Michigan State, and serving a user of about 1,400 users in the, in, the, uh, in the nuclear physics community. So this facility accelerates beams from proton to uranium, so basically all, st all stable ions, up to a very high beam power, 400 kilowatts, quite high beam power. And uh, with, energy, with, with a modest energy of about uh, from 200 to, to, to 400 MeV per nuclear. And that is to produce uh, various types of secondary, secondary beam, uh, rare isotopes and secondary beam and for, for research as well as for applications. You see the, this is the, this is the cross section of the accelerator facility with the beam produced from the, from the floor level and uh, still down, 10 meters, uh, 10 meters down because uh, for the radiation shielding and accelerator several turns and uh, hitting a target. Then the, with, the, with the fragment separator, separate the secondary beam and for, for and supporting the, the existing uh, user, uh, user facility. So just for the next 10 slides, I just flash you the title of the, of the talk. So first we need a big ion source, intense ion source to start, that's, that's, that's a place to start with. Secondary structures, massive secondary structures, both for focusing and for acceleration, what they call the radio frequency quadrupoles. And because it's a very high power, very, uh, 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 very intense uh, uh, beam, so it's much, uh, much more beneficial to use the supervising uh, cavities for acceleration. So next big te technology, which also, which also is most, most, cost, uh, uh, co most costly, is the supervising radio frequency uh, systems. So these are what they call cry modules. This is about eight meters long, contains uh, uh, multiple cavities for acceleration as well as for uh, uh, magnets for steering. So these cavities typically runs at, uh, at 2K for, high, for highest possible gradient, which, uh, highest achievable gradient. And supporting that as a, as a cryogenics because of the, the scale of the facility, cryogenics by itself becomes, uh, becomes uh, a science in, the, in this case. So integrated cryogenics supporting the uh, supercondenting RF facilities. Then the typically trivial issue, trivial problems like uh, just stripping the, uh, stripping the, the ions to, to high charge state become non-trivial in this case because a simple carbon foil, which is, uh, which is typically used for charge stripping, in this case won't be able to sustain the beam power. So in, in this case, the strip, strip, strip ions actually when used uh, a, a, liquid, a liquid lithium a fast moving liquid lithium uh, as, the, as a means to strip the charge. So in, the, in this case, the liquid means uh, it can quickly uh, dissipate the, the heat produced by the ion. So simple uh, techniques, uh, 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 simple problems in this case become, not, not become non-trivial. Beam loss detection, machine protection, because the beam is so powerful that can easily damage the, uh, the, the machine. Beam collimation and target. So target again becomes a big issue because the beam power is so big, uh, is it, so uh, so massive, it can easily damage the beam power. So in this case, people use the liquid target, they use the rotating target again to dip, uh, to, to dip, dissipate the heat, and for various types of ap applications, and so on and so forth. So also on the physics side, also 
uh, many many subjects becomes uh, becomes a hot topic in this field. So how to control the beam loss? How to how to control the the the, char the space charge? Basically, it's the coulomb force uh, in, uh, inside the beam. How to con how to control the coupling impedance, which may cause the instability in the beam, and the electron cloud complications in a hydrogen beam, and so on and so forth. So. Okay, so let me try to summarize my talk. So what it takes to build a great accelerator? So obviously we need ideas. So synchrotron, for example, synchrotron, that was invented in, uh, in 1944, followed by alternating gradient synchrotron, followed by collider, then stochastic cooling. So these major events made possible the continuous uh, advancement of, uh, of energy frontier. Uh, as a function of uh, of, uh, of year, but idea uh, certain ideas itself must be supported by technology. So as you as I showed you, technology is a key component of this uh, of this area. And uh, what's most challenging, in my opinion, is uh, great ideas that can be realized by cutting edge technology. And that's a part which uh, which uh, we haven't done enough. So, Professor Yan indicated to us future of high energy physics relies on accelerators. So how are we doing so in, in this area? So I guess not too well. So there, the not, not much really have, not much new concept happened since the stochastic cooling in this area. There are many, many great ideas, but they have, haven't been really confirmed by, 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 by the experiments and, and supported by technology. And we must not lose the will to proceed. And fortunately, this area is also goes beyond the energy frontier. frontier area. And, the, and this area is really flourishing. That keeps the field very active and uh, keeps us busy. Thank you. It's it's, it's, it's great technology. I think it's very promising. The con again, the, the common problem is that this, this type of facility is so expensive. So of course, there are many people working on more advanced concepts. Unfortunately, that's not mature enough to support a real facility. So that's a difficulty, in my opinion, in this area, in this frontier. A lot of exotherapies in Japan. Yes. Do you think they will attract a lot of the service to visit and go to the, you know, exotherapy center? They should. Certainly. So this type of facility actually requires a, a team to, to make sure they can operate properly. It's not basic. It's, it's very difficult to run a turnkey system. I think people start to come to a realization. You know, they need a, they need people to really. Make sure this type of facility works. So it is very deep. So, part of the question, I think we were close based on the session and the fact that we 